this is a new shirt and I apparently ordered the wrong size because it is choking me and I can hardly think because of the oxygen being cut off to my brain. So that's something. Ugh. Yeesh. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Essential Presents. So um, I have a, I'm not a big family, but I have a number of siblings. Uh, there are actually six of us total six of us total, and uh, my oldest sister, a couple years ago, it's kind of funny, um, she's, well, I call her my sassy sister, but she's just a lot of fun. Well, they're all fun, but um, she's the one who will always tell you what she thinks, and um, that's beside the point, more or less, but a couple years ago, so my older sister, um, she was, I don't know, mid-40s, I guess, and she had, she got, on the inside of her uh, forearm, inside of her wrist, she got a tattoo of a skull, human skull, uh, that was surrounded by flowers, and I, it was summertime, and I was like, oh, hey, uh, nice tattoo. She's like, shh, don't tell mom. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, you are an adult. Second of all, you have a tattoo of a skull surrounded by flowers on the inside of your wrist, inside of your forearm. I think mom is going to find out at some point, you know. Anyways, so, of course, my mom did. And so my sister, at one point, she said, well, um, hey, could you bless my tattoo? And I thought, I don't know. Sure, why not? I don't know. Yeah, why not? We bless everything. So um, so I just said a prayer that said as often as, you know, my sister looks at this image that she be reminded of her own death and that she would live, you know, each day uh, so that she'd be prepared for the day that she enters into the presence of God, you know, and you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I get done and she's like, oh, I like that. I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of a professional prayer. It's not my first rodeo, that kind of a thing. But that was the, the reality, you know, that, that sense of here's a skull and the inside of a wrist. I'm not recommending this. I'm not endorsing this. I'm just saying this is the story of my sister and the blessing of the skull tattoo. Historically, uh, there have been Christians who have, like, kept skulls in their presence, right? So they, um, monks, nuns, uh, who would have, like, a human skull on their desk where they would work. And as they did their work, they looked at that skull. And there's the repeated phrase uh, in Latin, it's memento mori. And that phrase is, as often as you look at that skull, as often as you um, wake up, as often as you greet another person, just remember your death. That's what memento mori means. Memento mori, remember your death. In fact, I, I heard that it was one of those things where sometimes the monks and nuns would greet each other that way. The Christians would greet each other with this greeting of remember your death, which I think is funny kind of to think about and think like, hey, hey, what's up? Good morning. Remember your death. But that's powerful and profound. Why? Because so few of us actually ever really consider our own deaths. I imagine death so much it seems more like a memory. <laughs> that was a quote from something. Name it in the comments below. But so few of us actually reflect on our own death. Even fewer of us actually prepare for our own death. But the first step of preparing for your death is to remember, recall like memento mori, to remember the fact that you're going to die. How am I living today in such a way that if this was my last day, because that's the reality of the fact is, the fact of the reality, the reality is that at some point, that will be our last point. In one moment, that will be our last moment. One day will be every one of ours last day. But if I haven't done anything to prepare, to prepare for that day, then what do I think is going to happen? When I'm standing before God and he asks me to make an accounting of my life, to remember your death is something so profound and so absolutely necessary for the Christian. Remember your death. Reflect on your death. Prepare for your death. But here's another thing. This is crazy. Um, I'd always thought that memento mori simply meant remember the future death. Remember that it's going to happen at some point. But someone clarified to me, I don't know how long ago it was, that memento mori, that greeting memento mori, didn't just reference the future. Remember the future? You're going to die. In the, in the, it also referenced the past. If you were to speak to another Christian and say, Memento Mori, one of the things they were saying is, yes, sure, sure, reflect on the future, that you're going to die. Prepare for that. But the other is, remember you have died. What does St. Paul say? He says, I've been crucified with Christ, and so the life I live now is no longer mine. That I'm, I'm dead. I've been crucified with Christ. And the Memento Mori, remember your death, was not just a, a, show, a shoot out to the future, was also a reflect on the past. You have already died. The life you live right now is not your own. You've been purchased at a price. And the fact is, you've already died. If you're a Christian, you've been baptized, you've already died. You've already died in Christ. You've already experienced a certain resurrection in Christ. And so remember your death. Why? Because two things. One is we experience so much anxiety in our world right now. 
so much fear and trepidation right now. What if you already died? <laughs> there are nothing. It, dead men fear nothing. Dead men are anxious about nothing. Dead people don't worry about anything. Why? Because I've already died. The life I live is no longer my own. Imagine that freedom. Imagine the freedom of actually remembering your death on a regular basis, waking up and saying, I've died already. Lord, what do you want? <laughs> I've died already. Lord, what do you need from me today? Lord, I, I've died already. There's nothing I need to be afraid of. There's nothing I need to be anxious about. There's nothing I need to worry about. Why? Because I've already died. And the future. Not only are we plagued by anxiety and fear, but so few of us look to the future with joy and with hope. But to remember your death always in that sense of saying, I know, I know the one to whom I look. I know the one in whom I trust. I know the one who is the source of my joy. But to be able to remember your death and not only have that peace and confidence, I've already died. I live in Christ now. But also to remember your death and have that joy and hope of he's the one I'm living for. Reflect on this. Memento mori. Remember your death. Remember you have died. Remember you will die. And because of that, there is nothing you need to fear. And because of that, you can begin to live joy right now in anticipation of the joy you'll step into the moment you die with God's grace. For all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. Oh, also, comment below. What was the, what was the name of the thing I was quoting earlier? I imagine that's too much. It seems more like a memory. This is where it gets me on my feet, the enemy ahead of me. Anyways, you got it.